watching, I'm Akvarsha Nadalaikum. It's going to be a chemistry lecture today and in today's lecture we are going to discuss about atomic theory. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss what atoms are, how their theory began, if they are indeed the smallest particle of every matter and so on. So without further ado, let's begin. So to begin with, what is the atomic or molecular or atomic molecular theory? If you look at your screen, you can see that the atomic molecular theory states that all matter is made of small, fast-moving particles known as atoms. And when these atoms join together, they can form molecules. The atomic theory or the atomic molecular theory is not just one theory. These are theories that are put forth by different scientists at different times and in combination they produce or they form what is known as the whole basis of the atomic theory. If we looked into the history of atoms or atomic theory, we will see that all atoms share the same basic structure and during the last 200 years Different scientists have put forth different ideas, different structures for how the atom is made up or how um, it is composed. So if we were to look into some of those theories, we will definitely begin with Democritus. Now, Democritus was a Greek scientist, philosopher, whatever you can, whatever you say. He with him the word atom or atomos began. The, the word atom comes from the Greek word atomos, which means indivisible, which basically means that you can't divide any further. It, um, it went for, it, it, the whole story uh, went in such a way that if you take a little piece of gold and then if you start cutting it, you will eventually reach a part which cannot be divided anymore. And that was thought to be atoms or the smallest part of every matter, in this case the smallest part of gold molecule. But it was later discovered that the case is not so. But nonetheless, the history of atom began with Democritus, uh, wherein the word Thomas came about. And um, this was put forth by the Greek philosopher Democritus at 5th century BC. Then we have Mr. John Dalton. Mr. John Dalton's or John Dalton's ideas were based on experiments. He, he developed a theory of matter, and that theory had four main concepts. If you if you look into your screen right now, you will see the four main concepts are all matter is composed of tiny, indivisible particles called atoms. Atoms of each element are exactly alike and have the same mass. An atom of one element cannot be changed into an atom of a different element. For example, if I wanted to change an atom of water into an atom of iron, it cannot be done. That was one of the concepts of John Dalton's experimental theory. And then, atoms of different elements can join to form compounds. This means that if I combine an atom of hydrogen with an atom of... If I combine two atoms of hydrogen with one atom of oxygen, I can form it, it will, I can form water. And in the same way, if I combine one atom of sodium with one atom of uh, chloride and chloride ion, I will form sodium chloride, which is a compound. So these were the four main concepts put forth by John Dalton's experimental theories. And this on your screen right now is Dalton's model, which looks like an eight ball. You do know what an eight ball is, right? Like one of those future predicting balls that you shake and then you ask a question, you shake it, and then a kind of a prediction comes along. 
If you haven't seen it, you can Google it. Or it kind of looks like the pool balls that we play on pool tables, but a bit larger. So, in Dalton models, the atom looked like an eight ball. Dalton thought that atoms were like smooth, hard balls that could not be broken into similar pieces. Like if, in, in, according to Dalton, if you take an atom which basically looks like a smooth um, ball, hard in structure, if you wanted to break it, it couldn't be broken into further smaller pieces. Next, after Dalton, the, another scientist model that comes important or is important uh, when it comes to atomic theory is Thomson. Thomson's model originated at the end of the 1800s and Thomson discovered that atoms were not simple solid spheres. After Dalton's theory, next comes Thomson's model. Thomson's model was the theory of atom that was put forth by Edward Thomson at the end of 1800s. Now, according to Thomson, the, he discovered that atoms were not simple solid spheres, like Dalton said. And he said that ato atoms contained subatomic particles. He actually said that atoms can be divided, so atoms were not the indivisible God particles that it was thought to be, um, that they cannot be divided and they were the smallest. Thomson said that atoms instead contains of smaller particles within itself, which we now know as basic or fundamental particles. He said that they were very small, negatively charged, and he called them electrons. According to Thomson's model, he, he, he also knew that atoms were electrically neutral. So if he's saying that an atom can atom on its uh, inside contains particles that are much smaller and are negatively charged, he knows that the atom must contain enough positive charges to contradict the negative char negatively charged particle that he uh, discovered or he spoke about. So, the atom must contain enough positive charge to balance the negative charge of the electron. And Thomson proposed a model where electrons were stuck into a positively charged matrix or a positively charged sphere. It's kind of like a chocolate chip cookie or, as we commonly know, a pie model. So, Thomson's model looks something like this. See, if you look into your screen right now, according to Thomson, this whole pink sphere or this whole pink spherical shape is an atom and the pink parts are the positive charges. The whole pink dough or the pink smooth surface is where the positive charges are spread evenly. And on top of those positive charges, the negative charges are kind of like stuck along like, like chocolate chips on cookies or, or um, raisins in a pie or if you are fond of shemite then raisins on a shemite. So uh, this was a theory that was um, given about the structure of atom. But then Thomson's model was proven wrong by another scientist whose name was Ernest Rutherford. By the early 1900s, scientists knew that the positive charges of atoms was due to a subatomic particle known as proton. Now, in 1911, Ernest Rutherford begins to test this theory. He, his experiments led him to believe that uh, the positive charges of atoms are not spread everywhere like that was proposed in Thomson's model. He said that the positive charges are instead concentrated in the center. And he called this center the nucleus. So in Thomson's model, we learn the positive charges are spread everywhere like the dough of a cookie. But he, Rutherford said that that thing was totally wrong. He said that the positive charges are instead situated inside a center and the negative charges 
are roaming, roaming about around the center. So, um, what, how does his model, Rutherford model, look like then? Uh, if you look at your screen right now, you will see a loose expression, a figurative expression of how Rutherford's model looked like. See, he described that the atom was mostly empty space, except for the center where the nucleus is, and which contains mostly all the mass. So he said that his, his idea, his model of an atom, looked like that of a peach. Or uh, if uh, you haven't had a peach, let's say his model looks like that of an apple. He said that the center of the apple, where the seeds are, is like the atom where the nucleus are. The center contains the nucleus, as in the apple center, the seeds are present. And the flesh is the mostly empty space of an atom. And he said, that uh, the center, which contains the positive particle, is where the most of the mass is present. So we can assume that from his model, he is saying that the negative particles contains little to no mass. So uh, this model ha is something that is still in practice. This model is uh, still variations of this model is something that we still accept or we still learn when we are learning about chemistry. But this wasn't the last or the final model. After him, next came, next came Bohr's model. Bohr, or Neil Bohr to be precise, actually modified Rutherford's model in 1913. He proposed that each electron or the negative particle has a certain amount of energy. He said that those energy helped electron that move around the nucleus. And uh, electrons move around the nucleus in what, we, what is known as energy levels. If an electron has a lot of energy, it is higher up on the energy level staircase. If an electron has low energy, it is lower in the energy level staircase. And energy levels surrounds the nucleus like rings on your finger. So if you had two rings stacked on your finger, this would be one energy level, this would be another, and this would be another. So according to Bohr, if you look at your screen right now, this is what Bohr's model of an atom would look like. See, the positive strong center and the rings of energy level surrounding the positive center and see these white little dots these are representing the negative particles or electrons and this has been known or this has been called Neil Bohr's model has been called the planetary models because this resembles you guys our own planetary system wherein the sun is at the center and our planets the and our planets are roaming around the sun and they are kept in their orbit by gravitational energy so energy levels occupied by electrons are like orbits of planet at different distances from the sun so like some planets are closer to sun, some electrons are closer to the nucleus. And some planets are farther away from the sun. Electrons in far off energy levels are farther away from the nucleus. Although Neil Bohr's planetary model gave us one of the most contemporary ideas of atomic structure, another model known as the electron cloud model, is one of the most widely accepted models of today. According to this model, electrons dart around in energy levels. So, see, the thing is, this model is saying that we have in an atom energy levels wherein electrons are moving, but they are not moving in a regular circular motion. 
They are moving about, darting around in random directions while staying in the same energy level. And it's not just one electron. If an energy level contains more than one electron, there are more than one direction or there are more than one way those electrons are darting about. So that creates a kind of a cloud of negative charge around the positively charged center. And um, the electron cloud gives the atom its size and its shape. So, if you looked at your screen right now, this is what an electron model looks like. See, in the center, you have the positive charged particles. And see the bluish circular dots around in this one level and then there is another. This cloud or this uh, vague circular lining or ring that is surrounding the positive center. This is our electron cloud. So this electron cloud contains the negatively charged particles that are moving about the positively charged particles. And the, this, these negatively charged particles are moving in a regular pattern. They're moving their own way while staying in the same energy level. And they're darting about forming a cloud also giving the atom its shape. Last but not the least, we have the modern atomic model. The modern atomic model was put forth by Sir James Chadwick in 1932. And he was a physicist who was awarded the Nobel Prize for his discovery of a particle which we now know as the neutrons. In 1932, Chadwick discovered another particle in the nucleus of an atom. And this new particle was called a neutron. He uh, surmised that neutrons are particles which have no electric charge. So according to him, an atom has a positive center and a negative electron cloud. But also in that positive center, an atom consists of another group of particles with no charge at all. And according to his theory, at the center of the atom is a tiny massive nucleus containing protons and neutrons. Surrounding the nucleus is a cloud-like region of moving electrons. So see guys, these theories, beginning with Democritus and ending with Chadwick, answers these questions of ours that what an atom is, whether or not it is the smallest particle of all matter, and the arrangement of atoms and how its fundamental particles are arranged and how its fundamental particles are placed. So, this was the end of part one of Atomic Theory. And up until next part comes along, have a nice day.